Hello and welcome to Views from the Shed, this time with reading glasses because I thought I'd opt for continuity over vanity. Now I can see my crib sheet and it will flow like a river. Today I'm going to talk about a thread that I saw on the Horizons Unlimited Facebook page. Someone has said, does anybody do a long trip without writing a blog or a book about it? It was a very popular thread, 750 comments, and I read most of them because this is a very well researched vlog. One of the uh, best comments I thought was someone said, you are obligated as an independent traveller to report what you see, particularly when you go to the more, I don't know, controversial countries. You know, Islamic countries, Islamic people don't get good press. The media love to have their sensationist headlines. And when we go to these places, whether it's Turkey or Iran, wherever, we find that they are wonderful, hospitable, friendly people, generous. And uh, it's our responsibility to report how it really is. That, I thought, was a very good point. One of the other points was, well, you know, are we not encouraging people to go to already overcrowded areas? And that touched on something that has been done already. Uh, I did used to do a podcast and we talked about travel influencers. I didn't at the time even know what travel influencers were. But there are these beautiful people, photoshopped and lovely with their perfect families, who travel around and are employed by various tourist destinations to be seen in these places and then their followers follow them. It seemed ridiculous to me, but it exists. But it's not a new thing. In the 12 or 1300s, not exactly sure when, Marco Polo went off and travelled through Asia. 24 years he spent travelling around and he wrote a book about it. And that influenced Christopher Columbus, who then went and discovered America and practically annihilated the indigenous population. Move forward 300 years and you've got Tony Wheeler, who started the Lonely Planet guidebooks to travel around the world on a, shoe, on a shoestring. I don't think there's a single country now that you can't travel around without a Lonely Planet guidebook. And then you've got Ted Simon in the 70s, who I'm sure influenced a lot of us motorcycle riders to go off and explore. It certainly influenced Charlie and Ewan, and they in their own right were also influenced. So it's not new, it continues. You've got people like nowadays Itchy Feet and Ed March, who do professional uh, vlogs, I suppose you call it, and, uh, and, and they too, in their own right, are, are influencers. Informative, good quality stuff. I think the problem is there's a lot of shite out there and that dilutes the general content of what's going on. You know, back in the 80s, I, I, I come from Colchester in Essex in the UK, back in the 80s somebody in Colchester decided to put their video camera in the passenger seat of their car on a Sunday morning listening to Radio Caroline, which is a pirate radio station at the time, and drive around Colchester. For a very select amount of people, this is a very interesting video. He did this long before YouTube, but that's where I came across it. And uh, it's great to see the style of car from, what, 40 years ago. And uh, the sort of pedestrians, they weren't obese. They don't have dodgy tattoos, but they captured a moment in time. And I think the people who are traveling now still do that. I mean, watch a TV show from a year ago and no one's wearing masks. And it all seems so strange because now we all wear masks. So even a video from early 2020 will capture something which now seems almost alien to us. God knows where this thing will go, but God knows where this <laughs> view from the shed will go. But the point is, what we, what we report when we travel is a moment in time. The thing is, and this is the trick, it can get obsessive. I, uh, I went to a Horizons Unlimited show in Ireland uh, about five or six years ago, and I'd allowed 
a few extra days to ride around after the show and see a little bit of the country. Turns out several other people had intended to do the same thing. And so a bunch of us, about six of us I think, set off. I thought this is great for someone who, who travels alone, I'm going to have company. Every time we stopped, everybody, and we're not talking teenagers here, they're in their 50s, everybody habitually got their phones out their pockets. I thought, well, this is fun, isn't it? Travelling with company. We're sitting in a corner cafe watching Ireland go by. Well, I'm watching Ireland go by. They're bloody scrolling. I said, why are you travelling exactly? What are you seeing? Are you travelling for lights, for acceptance, for popularity, or to actually see what's going on in the country you've chosen to travel around? I mean, you've inevitably got your gap year travellers. And for them, I think it is a trip of a lifetime. They do their debauched trip around the planet. They stop in Thailand, get a tailor-made suit made for them. They go back to the home. They do their interview. They get their career. They buy their house. They have their 2.4 kids. It was a trip of a lifetime. But for some of us, motorcycle travellers, perhaps we're able to do this a little bit more frequently. And when we're doing that, perhaps we should be a little bit more in the moment and a little bit less desperate to look for a Wi-Fi connection. You know, we've all got our mediums for me, you know, I, <laughs> I like to write about it. I do, I do books to some degree. I am a hypocrite because I suppose I'm a tri travel influencer. It is wonderful to get emails from people who say, well, I read your books and I took off on my bike and I did this. Well, that's great and everything, but that's my medium. That, if I have any talent at all, certainly not vlogging, it's probably writing. So um, there's, there's the GoPro people. It's, uh, for me, it's a damn good editor who can make a compelling GoPro video because really, if I'm going to watch this on a screen, why aren't I watching this from the bike? I want to be watching it while I'm riding, not somebody else's experience, not really. And you know, whether you're GoProing, whether you're blogging, whether you're writing a book, whether you're Facebook and Instagram, whatever you're doing, while you're doing it, life is passing you by on the road. And I think really you ought to be meeting the locals and they're the interactions. They're the things that stay with you when you get back home. They're the things to write about. They're the stories to tell. So, you know, this obligation to blog and write can sometimes be so, so like daunting. I meet people who are like, oh, I'm so behind in my blog. I've got so much to do. And I think to myself, well, if it's such a big deal to you, if it's such a worry, such a concern, I don't really think it's going to be that exciting for the reader to read. And as a reader, ultimately, like a newspaper in the news agent, like a book on the shelf, we can choose. Do we want to read it or do we not? The compelling need to blog and write and report and social media about what we're saying, like anything, I think is best done in moderation. That's my opinion. That's what I think about it. Hypocrite I may be, writer I am, blogger I'm kind of. But ultimately, if you do have your own blog or your own Facebook page and your own um, YouTube channel, one thing I've discovered is it isn't compulsory to say like, subscribe and share. And if you don't have a blog or a Facebook page and you do a trip, it still exists even if you're not sharing it to the world. So, thanks for watching this episode of Views from the Shed.